session. So as you know, we are uh, having many events related to AI during the next month, at least here at GDG Madrid. We have a hackathon going on with Google for Startups um, that finished on the 13th of May. If you want to create a startup uh, based on AI, you can do that during this event. Um, we have a bunch of other events going on. You can check them out in our platform, also join our Discord. I'm happy to see familiar faces from other things like Android, Stabi, Jam, and some other stuff. And yeah, so mm, thank you for attending this event. I know it's uh, usually after work uh, time of the day, but it's nice to see that you're engaging <coughs> with the community. And again, thank you to <laughs> Javi for letting us the space and for, uh, for organizing the, the session. Now, I will pass on to Emily, which is from the GDC community. Thank you. Um, hello, everyone. I'm Emily, one of the colleagues of Google Developer Student Club at Dai University. And um, our team uh, is working to organize different events and workshops at university um, in order to help non-technical and technical students to get familiarized with Google Developer Technologies, to get more hands-on experience on the technologies, basically. And this is open for both external attendees and also internal attendees for the students. And we have some past, we had some past events such as Fest, for where we had Google experts speaking and speakers, and also some workshops about neural networks, about uh, screen etc. And soon we have an event about LLM and Google Cloud on May 8th. So if you're interested, you are more, more than welcome to join. I can share with you later our Instagram or some other information. It is going to be an interesting um, event. And also we'll have a celebration of Google I.O. Day also at the university. So if you're interested, you're also very welcome to join. And yeah, I also have one of our officers, uh, Nico, with us here. So thank you. Thank you having, for having us here. Hello, yes, I wanted to welcome you to Salonis, welcome to your home. That we we are like very happy to to host this kind of, of events. Thank you so much Mary, to, to be here like with this interesting session. Thank you so much to the GDG and GDG. So they didn't ask again like help provide a little value to the community hosting this kind of event. And yes, so you know a little about who we are, and then you can investigate and also we can talk in the in the networking. So Celon is a, a product company, a German company that uh, born around a field that is was academic in the in, in that moment, and we bring it to the to the business that was process mining that is a very interesting field. I don't want to to get you bored, so you can like investigate later. And now we have a, a happy Madrid like three years ago, and we just uh, got to five hundred people here, and building really like a, a nice innovation hub here with uh, a lot of interesting uh, products so also like uh, hiring new people so if you want to to check and also trying to participate in the community to bring back what a lot of us have uh, gained from the community giving a little back uh, organizing this kind of events and also with our own community that is Celonic uh, Tech that is in Mita so if you can also if you want to to take a look and come again soon we will be more happy to do it. Okay, thank you so much. Let's see if this works. Is it working? Can you? Yes. Okay, that's good. All right. Well, first of all, thanks for the host. Thanks for the organizers. My name is Meta Tamel. I am a developer advocate at Google. I'm based in London. Um, and I told my boss at the beginning of the year, we don't go to Spain often. You know, we go to France, Germany, Eastern Europe, US, 
but we don't come to Spain. Maybe I've been to Spain once for work, uh, and we, want, we wanted to change that. So we wanted to um, do some events in Spain. So that's why we started like planning some meetups in Spain. So I have three meetups, uh, one in Barcelona on Monday, one here in Madrid today, and then one on, in Malaga on, on Friday, talking about Gemini stuff. And I hope to come more often because I like visiting Spain and I think um, we should visit all the countries as much as we can as do operations. All right, so um, this is my Twitter. This is my blog. Uh, this is speaker deck where I have the slides of this presentation. And this is a GitHub page where I have the instructions for the demos that I'm gonna show. So everything I'm gonna to show today, it's already available on speaker deck and also on GitHub, okay? And I'm gonna share the links again at the end of the presentation. So if you're not sure if you care about this stuff yet, in the end, you will also will have uh, some uh, opportunity to take um, these links as well. And um, did anyone notice anything about the title, by the way? Anything wrong, maybe? No? It changed. Yes, it changed. <laughs> because initially we said, improve your development workflow with your AI. That's what, that was the name of the, type, the event. But now we, we are telling you, Gemini Code Assist, like, so what happened? Well, we renamed products. So we renamed Duet AI to Gemini Code Assist. And that's why I also changed the name of the presentation. But we are talking about the same thing. I'm not trying to trick you or anything like that. <laughs> so I just want to point that out. And um, what, what, what I'm gonna do now is, I'm gonna go through some slides and explain Gemini, uh, Gen AI, Code assist and just give you an overview of what this technology is so that you have a context on what we're talking about. And then after that, uh, I want to go through some live demos and actually show you how this stuff works, okay? So let me actually time this so that I know how long this talk takes. I want to know. <laughs> All right, so let's get started. And feel free, by the way, if you have questions along the way, raise your hand and let's, let's make this interactive, so don't be shy. Now, when you look at Google AI landscape, it's quite complicated, but I want to give you an overview so that you know what we are talking about. Now, when you want to use um, large language models on Google, on Google, you have two choices. One is Google AI Studio, another one is Google Cloud, okay? You might ask, okay, well, why do we have two choices? Why, why there's no one choice? Um, because you know Google Cloud is for enterprises, so if you're a, a, a big customer and you want to run your own um, models and use your, and use them in an enterprise kind of setting, you will probably use Google Cloud. Um, but if you're a developer and you want to try out um, LLMs, then you will probably use Google AI Studio. So it's two different markets basically, right? And these models, um, first initially we started with Palm, that was a model that was published last year. Um, it was, it's available in both, but now Gemini uh, is the most advanced and, and latest model from Google, right? And then also on um, the Vertex AI is the um, AI platform on Google Cloud. And in Vertex AI, there's something called Model Garden, which is a marketplace for different models. So th these models are models from Google, such as Palm, Gemini, Gemma, and others. But there are also models from other companies like Llama, for example, if you heard Facebook just published a couple of days ago, it's already available, cloud and diffusion and stuff like that, right? So there's a lot of different models that you can use in Vertex AI. So that's the model part, okay? Now there's also the Gemini brand. Um, so at Google, we are trying to rebrand things. So everything that uses Gemini under the covers, they are getting rebranded with Gemini, okay? For example, we used to have something called BART, which is kind of like the chat GBT of Google Cloud. Now it's called Gemini App. We used to have something called Duet AI, the original name of this talk. Uh, now it's called Gemini Cloud Assist. And we also have something called Duet AI for developers, which is now called Gemini Code Assist. And this is what we're gonna talk about today, okay? So this is like the big Google AI landscape. And we are talking about just a small piece of that, okay? But I want you to understand that, but there's a lot more to learn. So maybe in a future uh, session, we can talk about something else, but this is what we will talk today, okay? Now, in terms of models, uh, so Gemini is the latest model. Um, then there's Gemini 1.5. Um, 
which is kind of special because it has this large context size. It has up to 10 million um, token context size. So what that means is that you can send a lot of data to, to Gemini and Gemini can actually use that as context. So you can set one up, you can send one hour of video, 11 hours of audio, 30K lines of code. So you can send your whole repository and then Gemini 1.5 will actually accept that as input. And this is quite special in the industry compared to GPT and other, others, uh, because this large context size is quite important if you want to do something uh, with videos, for example, right? And then there is um, Gemma, which is the open source version of Gemini. Because when we introduce Gemini to people, sometimes people say, you know, it's great, but it's Google Cloud specific model, which is true. Uh, what if you want to run your own model in your own infrastructure? Well, you can do that with, with Gemma. That's the idea with Gemma. It's not as powerful as Gemini, but it's powerful enough and, and you can run it anywhere you want, okay? So that covers the Gemini, Gemma, AI landscape in Google Cloud. Now I want to talk about Gemini Cloud Assist. So Gemini Cloud Assist, um, it's basically integrated AI assistant across Google Cloud products. So what we want to do is basically introduce AI in, in Google Cloud and in everything you do with Google Cloud, okay? Um, not just in one part of Google Cloud, but actually make it part of everything you do in Google Cloud, um, make it, AI assisted, make it easier for you. That's what Gemini Cloud Assist is about. It's models tra trained on Google Cloud, um, Google Cloud best practices. So it knows Google Cloud, it knows what, what it means uh, to have a Google Cloud project, it knows what are the best practices, so they can answer the questions for you. And I'm gonna show you this later. It's tailored for common personas. So it's for developers, operators, data for engineers, security professionals, and more. So it's not just for developers, it's not just for code. It's for running the code, securing the code, uh, making sense of the data, things like that. And it brings AI assistance to you via IDEs or Google Cloud Console. So you can use this in Google Cloud Console, and I'm going to show you that. But you can also use it within your IDE. So if you're coding, you also have it available there as well. So that's what Gemini Cloud Assist is. Um, and the use cases is basically assisted development. So it's for code completion, code generation, code explanation, multi-turn chat. Uh, you get this in your ID uh, through um, um, Gemini Code Assist that we'll talk about in, in Visual Studio, IntelliJ, um, Cloud Shell and Cloud, Cloud Workstations. It's for assisted operations. So for example, if, you're, if you have your service running uh, and it has some logs, you can say, okay, can you explain this log to me? And it will actually try to analyze the logs and tell you what's wrong with the logs, for example. Uh, it's for assisted data. So let's say you have your data in your SQL database or if you have your data in BigQuery. Uh, normally you would write a SQL statement to do access your data. But in this case, you can actually ask Gemini uh, by clicking here and you, you can say, you know, can you tell me this about my data? So you, you can basically naturally explain what you want and it will convert it into SQL and it will run it for you. And it's also for assisted security. So there's a bunch of security products in Google Cloud. Um, and, and well, this says Duarea, but it will be Gemini. Um, Gemini is basically integrated into these products and help you to secure your applications. So again, today's session is mostly about assisted development, but I just want to let you know that this is much more than just writing code. It's, it's basically write, writing code, operating your code, getting, getting access to your data, securing your applications, and more, okay? So now let's talk about the Gemini policy. So finally, where, where we are, uh, we, we, where we want to talk about. Um, so Gemini Code Assist is an IDE plugin uh, for AI-assisted application development tuned for Google Cloud. So it's, um, it's a plugin that you install into your IDE and it helps you with coding your application, basically, or making sense of your application. It supports 20 plus languages, like Go, Java, JavaScript, Python, C Sharp, um, SQL, and more. And actually, even the languages that are not supported officially, you can still ask and it will answer. Um, the level of support will depend on the training data, but it does a pretty good job with the major languages. So no matter what you're doing, uh, you will probably get some help with Gemini Code Assist. So it's available via Cloud Code. Cloud Code is the IDE plugin 
in, in Visual Studio Code or IntelliJ. So you install Cloud Code, and with that, you get Gemini Code Assist. Okay, so that's how you access to Code Assist so by installing this um, IDE plugin. And it's also available on Cloud Workstations, which is an IDE in the cloud, and Cloud Shell Editor, also an IDE in the cloud. Yes? Sorry, just one question. Is this Gemini Code Assist uh, free? Freely available? Or... Yes, right now it's free uh, until July. Okay. And after July, it's going to be free for one project, but for one person, it will still be free. Uh -huh. But if you are a, 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 a <coughs> So basically for each project, you, will you can have one person using Gemini Code Assist for free. So that will be free as well, but then if you are a customer, like with a number of developers, then you will need to get a license. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. All right, so it's, a, it's an IDE plugin, and basically with that, uh, you get some Gemini um, code assistance. And what do you get? Um, well, first, you get chat. So here we are in Visual Studio and Visual Studio Code. And then on the side, you get a chat interface. And then you can ask Gemini basically anything about your project or, or your code and, and things like that, and it will answer, OK? Uh, so that's number one. The second thing that, the second thing that you can get is expla explaining your code. So you can select a piece of code and say, explain this code. And it will, in natural language, explain what the code does. You can explain the whole file if you like. And you can also explain um, not just code, but like Docker files, for example, as well. So configuration as well. So it's code explanation, configuration explanation, basically anything that's in the screen, you can ask it to explain and it will try to do a good job with that. You can generate code. So if you start writing a function and you add some comments, it will fill the rest. And then if you like it, you can accept or not. Uh, or you can also add comments and then manually trigger it and say, generate code for me, and it will do that for you as well. This um, works pretty well, especially if you add good comments, then it will give you pretty good um, code. And we'll see how it works later when I show the demos. Uh, then once you have the code, you want to test the code. Um, and then you can first ask Gemini, um, can you give me a test plan to test this piece of code? And it will tell you, okay, to test this code, these are the things that you should probably do, these are the things that you should cover. So it will tell you, it will give you a rough test plan. And once you have that, you can ask it to generate tests. So you can say, can you take this test plan and generate the code? Or you can go here, and then you can also say, generate test cases for this piece of code. So it will generate test cases for the code as well. And I actually find the test generation pretty good because it has the code. So it takes the code and then it looks at it and generates usually pretty good tests for it. And we'll see again how, if it's going to work later in the demo. And the other thing that it does is that uh, when it generates code, it, sometimes it will tell you this piece of code uh, is coming from this, this GitHub page or it's coming from this Stack Overflow page. And it's, it warns you about the license. So if there's no license, it will tell you there's no license, you might want to check. Or if there's a license, then it will tell you it has this license, uh, do you want to use it or not? So it gives you the information so that uh, when you use the code, you, you know if, what license you are dealing with, right? Like, because you don't want to use a license that you're not supposed to do. So this gives you help uh, with that. And then it, at Next, which is a Google Cloud conference that happened just a couple of weeks ago, we had some new features. So we have this feature called, called, called Transformation that I'm going to show, about, show, you about, show you later, where you take the code and just transform that um, using an inline assistance. There is extended local context. So right now, Gemini looks at your, your open file and generates code for that file. But now this context is being increased to your basically your whole project so that it has the context of the whole project so that it understands more of your project, basically. It's going to have full code, code base awareness. So with Gemini 1.5, you can basically send your whole repository and say, can you change this repository to something, you know, like, so it, it will have that full code base awareness. And this is in private preview. It's not available yet, but it will be available soon. And it will also have code customization um, as well. This is about 
uh, let's say you have your, your private code, your private libraries, and you want to feed that to Gemini, and you want to you want Gemini to take that into account when it's generating code or when it's making suggestions. So for that kind of stuff, uh, you will be able to do that as well. So it's not for it's not just public code, but also your private code can be used to kind of get at, get, get code generation and and answers to your questions. Yes. Can this assistant also help at debugging the code? Can it help with debugging the code? Um, yeah, I mean, if something doesn't work in your code, you can ask what's wrong with this code, for example, then it will try to make suggestions about the code, but it doesn't help with like live debugging. For example. Yeah, like a step by step. No, so for example, let's say you put a breakpoint and then you're debugging yes. and then it doesn't work and you're, you can't ask right now, can you help me to debug this? But what you can do is that you can go to the logs if there's an error and say, can you explain this? And it will help you with that. So in a way it helps with debugging, but it doesn't help with live debugging yet. Yes. You mentioned that uh, it can reach a full repository, but it can generate also a full repository in terms of generating code, a full project or the project, or it's more like some classes or be able to provide information about I mean, right now the code generation is basically file based, so it will generate one file or, or maybe multiple files, but it doesn't really say, like, it doesn't, for example, generate a full GitHub repo and say, okay, here's the full thing checked in GitHub already. Maybe that will be the next step. Once it understands your full repo, maybe the next step will be like to actually give you a repo, but it's not there yet. Yeah. Anything else? Yes. So. If I understood correctly, uh, we can in integrate it with real code, but with every IDE also. So, JetBrains, JetBrain products, so uh, IntelliJ, uh, Golan, etc. And those integrations uh, have the same version of code assist or maybe a movie improvement one, or how does it work? So you will, you will install Cloud Code extension in your IDE. Yeah. So whatever version of Cloud Code you have. That's the version that you'll have, and then that's the version that for code SSL you'll get. And whichever ID uh, I use, it will work. Well, it will work with the ID that's that are supported by Cloud Code, so yes, yes, yes. Visual Studio Code, yeah. IntelliJ versions, uh, and that's it. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. All right. And yeah, there's a blog post here that you can read more about this um, new features if you like. If you like. And then, yeah, the, I mentioned the code, code transformation. Um, what code transformation does is that, for example, if you select a piece of code and then you, you just say add comments for this, then it will basically look at the code and then generate and add comments and gives you a diff. And then if you like it, you accept it. If you don't like it, you, you, you don't accept it. So it makes transforming code easier, basically. That's the idea here. And this is not available yet in the ID. It's available in, in the online editors, but it will come to IDs pretty soon. All right, so before I show the demos, I also want to talk about prompting because when you talk to uh, large language models, um, you need to have a different mindset than being a developer. You know, when we are developers, you like, we like to write code and we like the certainty of the code, right? Like we write something and by looking at the code, you can usually tell, okay, when I do this, this will happen. So the outcome is really certain, right? So you might have, with that mindset, you might think, okay, if I write this prompt, then I, I will get this final output and everything will be perfect, right? That's the mindset I had at least when I tried LLMs initially. But in reality, it doesn't work that way because LLMs are not predictable. Um, they, even with the same input, they will give you different outputs sometimes. Sometimes it will give you outputs that's not correct. Uh, so it doesn't work like you give a prompt and you get the final output right away. What happens is more something like this. So you give it a prompt, then it will give you some output, but the output is probably not correct. So you have to use your skills and knowledge on what you're asking and refine that prompt a little bit, right? Then you'll get another pro answer, and maybe that won't be great either. Then maybe at some point, at that point, you will probably search a little bit in the internet on what, what to ask. Then you will get another prompt, then eventually you'll get to the right output, right? But it's important that you need to understand that this is an iterative kind of process, right? You need to know enough to ask the right questions. You need to know enough when something is not right. You need to know how to reframe your question. If you don't know, you need to know how to ask to, 
to search to get the relevant information, so on and so forth. So it's a collaborative effort of you kind of applying this information, your, your knowledge, and Gemini basically giving you better and better answers, okay? And we'll see this when we do the uh, demos. Maybe sometimes it will work. Sometimes it's, if it doesn't work, we'll ask different questions and we'll, maybe we'll get to the right answer. But it's good to keep this in mind. And also when you look at um, the general population, right? Um, we have, and, and, and the subject expertise on a topic, right? Usually we have this curve. We have the beginners on this hand, and we have the experts on the, on the other hand. And when you look at the utility of LLMs, I think it goes like this, right? Um, if you are a beginner, you probably won't get too much out of LLMs because you don't know what to ask. You don't know if something is true or not. And if, if LLM gives you the, the wrong information, then maybe you won't be able to figure out that it's wrong information and you, and you won't be able to correct it. So maybe you won't, you won't, you will be frustrated basically if you're in here. Now, if you're an expert, then you will probably also be frustrated because let's say you are a Java developer and you know everything about Java. All the syntax is in your head. You dream about Java in your sleep, right? You are that kind of person. I'm not one of those people, but I know there are some people like that. Uh, if you are there and if you ask questions about Java to LLM, you will probably also be disappointed because it will probably give you good answers but not great answers, and it will also probably tell you some wrong answers. So you'll probably end up wasting more time than you should. But for the rest of us in the middle, it will probably be pretty good, right? You, you know some Java, you can ask some questions, and then when it gives you a code that doesn't compile, then you probably know how to fix it. You, you put it in your ID and then you, you fix it and, and then you ask another question and then you, and then you keep iterating. So if you are in the middle uh, in your subject, then I think LLMs will be great. If you are here or there, you'll be frustrated. So make sure you keep this in mind as well and think about what you're asking, how much you know, and what to expect from LLMs, okay? All right, I think that was a lot of talk, 20 minutes of talk, wow. Okay, now let's actually see that this stuff works. So this is the moment of truth. So there will be a series of demos that I want to show you this stuff. But before I continue, is there anything, any, any other questions before I go? Yes. I have one. Uh, you mentioned that we can generate code from comments. We can generate tests from code. Can we generate code from test? Can we generate uh, like code from test? Following chat? a TDD approach. Uh, I define my test and then I want the uh, Gemini to generate the code. That's a good question. I haven't tried that myself. Um, I think it should work. But the only way to find out is to try and see what happens. Yeah, I, I, I think we should be able to say, here's a test case. Can you write the code for it and see what happens? So I don't know the answer. Thank you. There was another one, yes. From the perspective of a company-wide project, is there a way to fine tune it to make sure it knows the company's repo and coding rules so that whenever someone is coding, it's following everyone else? <laughs> well, not right now, but so this one called customization is basically trying to address that. So whatever is conventions you have, code with libraries and everything, <clears throat> you're able to feed, feed that in, and then it will be able to use that basically in, in its answer. So it's coming. It's in private preview right now. About privacy? Privacy? Yeah, basically the code will be going back and forth to Google Cloud, I guess. Um, I mean, I haven't played with this feature yet, so I don't know actually how it works. Like, it, but yeah, I mean, if it's Gemini, if it's not Gemma, yeah, it will be going to Google Cloud. So you need to pro, you need to be comfortable basically to provide that information to the model that you are customizing. Yeah. Okay, so let me continue with the demos, and then we can ask more questions later. Okay, so, all right. So. By the way, I have this uh, repo that I put here with all the steps that you can also follow yourself if you want to try this out yourself. But first thing is that you need to set up Gemini codices. And, uh, and as I mentioned, to set it up, you need to install Cloud Code in your IDE. Uh, and you, you also need to enable Gemini codices API in Google Cloud Console. Uh, once it's set up, if you go to Google Cloud Console, so here I am in Google Cloud Console, you see that here at the top there's Open Gemini. 
So from anywhere in Google Cloud, you can basically access to Gemini, okay? And in here, let's say I want to ask, uh, what is Cloud Run? Like it's a service on Google Cloud, right? So I'm asking Gemini what that is, and it will be able to answer that for me. So it's available to you no matter where you are in Google Cloud. So that's place number one, okay? And the place number two is in your ID. So here I am in uh, Visual Studio Code. I have here uh, Cloud Code installed. And with that, I get the Gemini. That's what I meant. Like, so you need to install the cloud code, and then with that, you get Gemini. And with Gemini, I get this chat window here as well, the same, same kind of interface. And then if I, again, I ask here um, something, um, let's say, how do I use Gemini? Is it suggesting? Then, OK, it was that really quick. But basically, this is also calling Gemini and answering questions for me. So with this, I know that my Gemini is enabled, and I can, I can start using it, OK? So now um, let's um, start with um, designing an application, okay? So let's say you are new to Google Cloud, you, you, know, you know a little bit, but you don't know too much, and you want to deploy a serverless application, uh, but you don't know exactly where, so you want to ask Gemini, how can I deploy a serverless application, right? So let's copy this prompt, and then in this prompt, uh, let's clear this. In this problem, I'm saying I'm new to Google Cloud. I want to deploy a serverless application to Google Cloud. What are my options, right? So I'm just basically trying to figure out what, what my options are. Now this will go to Gemini. And hopefully within a few seconds, we'll get an answer. And then Gemini tells us, okay, like, yeah, so several options, like Cloud Functions is one, which is event-driven, um, function-based. This is, there's a Cloud Run, which is container-based. There's App Engine. Um, cloud functions for Firebase, so on and so forth, right? And then it also gives you some options on like which one you should choose, right? Um, so when you look at this, um, you're saying, okay, maybe it's cloud functions or maybe it's cloud run. Um, so let's ask Gemini more information. So we can say, okay, what is the difference between um, cloud functions and cloud run, right? So we are kind of trying to narrow down our options. Then, um, it tells us, okay, the Cloud Functions is event-driven, fully managed functions. Um, cloud Run is container-based serverless platform, okay? So, all right, um, maybe I want containers because they give me more flexibility. So let me see how I can create a container application. So I will use Cloud Run. So in the next step, uh, let's create the application. And I put all these prompts here in this repo so you can try these out later if you like. So now I want to ask Gemini, I am in cl Cloud Code and I want to create a cl um, Cloud Run application. How can I do that? So let's ask that. I'm in Cloud Code. How can I create a Cloud Run application? And then um, Gemini tells us, okay, go to Cloud Code and then create a new project and then create a new application, select Cloud Run application, and so on and so forth. As you see, this is not a great answer because right now I'm not sure how do I create a new new application, where do I go? Um, so this is one of the cases where the LLM is giving us some answer, but but you need to know your way around in Cloud Code to actually make sense of this. So now I know in Cloud Code there are some templates I can use uh, for applications. So maybe I'll change my problem and say, okay, I'm in Cloud Code, how can I create a Cloud Run application? using um, cloud, cloud code templates, right? So I'm, I'm kind of refining my uh, prompt a little bit with my knowledge. So as you see, you need to know enough to know that the answer is not great. So you need to refine it with your knowledge a little bit. And now he, it's telling me um, something similar again, right? Like, yeah, I mean, maybe I can keep refining more and more, but it's not really giving me the, the best answer. Like, so here it says, create a new application, but what it should tell me is basically, how do I create a new application? You go here and then you do a new application here, right? So it's kind of telling me the, the truth, but it's not giving me like exact same answers. But let's just go ahead and create a new application now. And then I'll choose a, as you see here, there's like a template. So I will choose a client run application and there's different languages. So for this one, let's use a Python uh, Flask application. And yeah, hello world. 
And now this is using a template and it's, it's going to create a Python application that runs in a container on Cloud Run. So let's wait that um, to, to be created. And then next, what we're going to do is, so let's see. Okay, it's downloading the template. So you see it created some application. I have some app.py. Uh, it's a it's a hello world application, so it's it's a Flask application. Just gonna say, you know, hello world or something like that. I have a Docker file because it's a container application. So there's a lot of stuff here. Uh, but what I can do is um, I can, for example, select the app.py and come here and say explain this, right? Just to get an understanding of what the code does. And now Gemini says. This Python code defines a simple web application using the Flask framework. It sets up a route to the slash um, URL, and it has a hello function that returns an HTML template with Cloud Run environment. That's pretty good, right? Now, when I look at the code, I see um, there is, um, let me make this a little bigger. I see that there's this K service, K revision, you know, stuff, which I don't know what it is. So I can select a part of the code and say, okay, explain this. So it doesn't have to be the full file. I'm just explaining parts of the, the file. And then it's telling me that, you know, the K service and K revision are environment variables in Cloud Run where the service is like the service name and the revision is the actual revision number of my application. So I can get understanding of that. And then I can go to Docker file. I don't know you, but I don't like, I hate Docker files because it's always hard to get them right. But again, um, you can, I can go and explain this, and it will also explain the configuration. So not just the code, but also the configuration. And you can even choose like a single line and say, okay, explain this Docker file to me. So if you don't know a certain part, uh, you can ask Gemini to explain this. So that's that's pretty good. Like it gives me a good understanding of the application. So let me see if we covered all the cases here. Um, yeah. So that's the explanation part. Um, next, let's run this application, but let's run it locally. Uh, again, let's assume that I'm not a Python developer, so I don't know Python that well. So I can ask, how can I run app.py with Flask command? Because I know that there's a Flask command line tool. So let's ask um, Gemini for that. And in the meantime, I will open a terminal in my IDE. And then Gemini tells me, um, again, like this is a, another case where um, it's getting confused because I have my Docker file open. So if you see here it, in, at the bottom, there's a context source. So it using, it's using Docker file as context. And then it's telling me how to run this as a Docker file. That's not what I want, actually. I want to run this file. So I close that. And then I ask the same question again. So this is all about refining your prompt or what you are seeing, right? So I want to run the app.py, not just within the container, but just by itself. Uh, and then it's telling you use this fast run command with host that thing. Maybe I don't need to host, but so I'll just do fast run and see if that works. Okay, uh, it seems to be running. So if you go to this URL, okay, this is the default uh, Cloud Run um, page. So yeah, that seems to be working great. Um, one thing I, I want to check, actually, let's check. So if I come here and then let's say, we, let's change this um, message. It's running on Cloud Run. So I just want to change that message and let's see if I can refresh this. If I refresh, you see this message is not changing, right? Because it's, it's not hot reloading. So I want to know how to hot reload my application. So I can go back to my um, code and say something like, um, is there a command line flag for Flask hot reload? So let's ask that. Again, the more information you give, the better the answer. So here I'm using Flask command line tool, and then I'm guessing there's a flag. So I'm asking that directly. I don't just say, 
can, well, how do I hold reload in Python? If you do that, then it will give you different answers. But if you give specific prompts like command line flask hold reload flag, then it will give you the right answer. So here it's telling me that there's a reload flag. So let's run with that. So I'm doing plus run reload, then it, it uploaded. So let's do um, refresh. So now it's telling me it's running on cloud run, but to see that it works, I can, I can come here and say with hot reload. <laughs> and then if you come here and do refresh, then yeah, we will hot reload work, right? So that's good. All right. So that's running the code locally, um, which is good. <coughs> now let's actually shit, start engine code. So generate some code. So what we want to do, let, let me stop this. What I want to do is I want to create a product service file. Um, so let's create a product service um, .py. So I will come here, product service .py. And then I will create a class called product service. And then at this point, I want this product service to have some test data, right? But I, I don't remember the JSON syntax. I, I can't be bothered, so I'll ask Gemini. I'm just going to copy and paste this. So here I'm saying create a products variable with a list of 10 products for a supermarket and each product should have an ID, name, description, and quantity, right? So that's what I want. I hit um, control enter and now it's generating suggestion. And then you see Gemini suggested this JSON for me um, with IDs and descriptions and for some supermarket items. And, not, and if you want to accept, you hit tab. So I'll hit tab now. And then not only that, um, it also generated a get products um, method for me that returns all of the products. And it also tried to generate a get products by ID method, but it didn't do it the full generation. So let me generate again. And now, well, I don't want to create this too much maybe. We are getting ambitious, so let's just get rid of this. I don't want to create an update yet and delete. <laughs> maybe I could keep, keep them, but. Anyway, here um, I have a get all products and get product by ID, basically already implemented for me. So that's pretty good. Like I have a product service um, set up. And now we need to come use this product service. So I'm gonna go back to my app.py and I'm gonna create a new route so that we can get to this product service. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just copy this Come back here, .py. Um, let's go at the top and then create a new route. And here I'm saying this is product uh, products underscore JSON and define a, 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 a function and then give it a little bit of explanation in the, in the comments. I'm saying return a raw JSON list of products using product service in products, product service .py, right? So I do something like that and let's see what we get. Sorry, I got something that I deleted. Okay, so this looks right. So this imports the product service, then calls the get products uh, method, and then returns that as products. Well, let's get rid of this. Maybe I don't need this. I'll just return the products, right? Again, here, you're using your knowledge to kind of get rid of stuff you don't need. So let's see if this is gonna work. And this is telling me that there's a license issue here. Uh, I don't know why he's complaining about this, but and actually in, in Python, you, pr you probably want this at the top. So I'll just move this at the top. Okay. So I had that um, and let's test this out. So I will do plus run. And if we go to uh, 500 products, JSON. Yeah, I got products JSON. Okay, good. So the testing is working, but now let's put this in an in an in an front end. Let's create a front end for this, which I really don't know how to do because I'm not a front end developer. But I just want to get to get something working quickly. So let's go to um, <coughs> ah, sorry here and create a new template. So I'm going to create a products.html in the templates folder, and then I'm going to just copy this comment again. So let's go back to um, here. There's templates, there's the default index.html. I create a new file. 
products.html. Okay. Now, if I was doing this myself, it would take me one hour just to figure out like what library to use, how to connect things together, stuff like this. But here, I'm just going to add a comment, and I will just say, create an HTML page that displays products from products.service using material design, which is a Google thing that looks good, but I don't know how to do it. Uh, it should display each product in <coughs> description and quantity in a cart in a grid layout. So yeah, we're just giving some general instructions. And you need to play with, if you're a designer, uh, front-end person, you'll probably give better prompts than this. Well, it's generating some suggestion. And I mean, I, don't, I have no idea, and I don't have any choice to, but to accept this code because I don't know how this stuff works. So I'll just accept it and hope that it will work. All right, so we did that, and what's next? Now I need to connect this to my application again. So I'll create another route, this time products template. Uh, so I'll copy this, come back here. So under products JSON, let's get rid of this. So I'm just saying, um, define a new products template. Uh, return a template list of products using product service in a product in product service in product service.py. So I'm I'm basically saying the same thing except I'm this time I'm telling it to use a template. So with that, oh sorry, with that let's see if it's gonna. Okay, so it generated this code which I will accept and I'll get rid of this. So it's creating a product service, uh, getting all the products again, but this time it's doing a rendered template and it's actually pointing to the products.html that we just created. So that's, again, pretty good. I mean, not complicated code, but it, it would take me a little bit of, bit of time to figure this out. So let's see if this works now. So I'll start again. And go here, products, template. And then, yeah, so I get this. I mean, it's not the most amazing <laughs> UI in the world, but at least it's, it's showing my my um, my test data. And then if I click view, and it's actually going to product one. So the URLs are also working too. And then you can keep iterating <coughs> and keep changing this um, to make it better, okay? Okay, I think that that's all I want to show in generating code. Um, so once we have the code, if you are a good developer, you want to write some tests, right? So let's see if we can write some tests um, to make this uh, better. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a product service test file. And normally you, you create this in a test folder, but I, oops, let's get rid of this. But, um, but I'm lazy now, so let, uh, let's just create here. Okay, and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to say create unit test for product service pi and see what we get. And generate suggestion and then accept. And then you see like it, it imported the unit test, it imported the product service, then it wrote some tests, test get products and check that there are 10 products um, returning. And then also testing one product. So it's, it's getting the first product and checking that that product is Apple basically, right? So that looks pretty good to me. And then if I go Python, um, what was it called? Products service test, we run it. And yeah, we run two tests. They seem to be working. If I actually change this from 10 to nine, we run it again, we see that it failed. So it seems to be working as well. Again, not earth shattering stuff, but it, but the amount of time it saves you is quite a lot. Like, I mean, just sometimes I spend 10 minutes just to find the right unit test framework, you know? And here you can probably say something like, use another unit test framework, and it will find the right libraries and it will import them for you, all that kind of stuff. Okay, and that's it for testing. Um, now I want to show you the transforming of the code. As I mentioned, there's, this is this new feature that you can transform the code. It's not available in IDE. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to the console, and then I'm going to open the, there's an editor in Google Cloud Console where it has all the latest features. So let's open that editor. It will take a little bit of time to, to load. And I'll show you the code transformation here. So this class shell, it's a shell within the browser, and then it has also an editor, which is kind of like VS Code, but simpler in here. 
And what we can do is, um, I don't know why I don't have these anymore, so let's close it. All file of a folder. Um, let's choose something else. So let, let's choose some Java file this time. So let's say you, you have this Java file and then um, you want to um, transform this. Yeah, that's the thing about Java. It, it takes a little bit of time <laughs> for things to load. <laughs> now let's wait things to initialize a little bit. Because, because as you see, like you need to sign into the project. Yeah, I sign into the project, and then you need to see Gemini enabled, so it's enabled. And then here, let's say I select the whole file, right click. Uh, well, Gemini is not enabled, so let's wait another second. Yeah, I should have chosen um, some Python or something like that. Okay, if it doesn't open in one minute, I will. I won't show you this. <laughs> in the meantime, is there any questions? No. Yes. I yeah. have a bunch. <laughs> okay. Um, can you reprompt it for alternatives? So, if the first suggestion it gives you, you don't like, can you reprompt it again? Yeah, you can reprompt as much as you want. And actually, you, sh you should reprompt it. Usually, it doesn't give you the right answer the first time, or maybe it gives you an answer that's not perfect. So you should keep, you in the chat, it has a context. So you can keep iterating on that context. I, I, I mean, the code generation thing with the command, uh, you said control. Yeah, control project. enter, yeah. Yeah, on the control enter, can you hit that a bunch of times to cycle through? Yeah, what happens is that when you hit, hit control enter, it Sometimes it gives you one answer. That's what happened in our case. But so, sometimes it gives you two, three different answers, okay. and you can step through them and choose the one you want. And if it's if none of them are good, what you can do is you can go back to the comment and edit the comment. Mm -hmm. So that's how you are basically reprompting, okay. and then that will generate something better. Yeah. Okay. Let me see here. Uh, okay. So here, let's see. Here we have Gemini. Called transform code preview. So I can just say something like add detail comments to the class and all methods, something like that. So you can you can say whatever you want basically, anything you, you want to transform the code. And hopefully it will look at that and generate you a detailed diff of what you have to what it, you can have. Yeah, you, you can see, well, it's not that much detail, but it, it basically tried to add a, a comment here, a comment here. So if you like it, you can, you can accept, or if you don't like, you can discard. I mean, it's not that impressive here, but that's the idea of transformation is that you, you can change code, you can add comments, you can add whatever you, you need with that. Okay. Um, one question, can you partially accept the answer? You know, that's one thing they don't have yet, and I opened a bug for that because it's usually just accept the whole thing or not, but I think it should be like, you should step through it and accept the ones you like and not accept the other ones you don't like, basically, right? Yeah. Yeah, and I will add another comment to that bug. <laughs> yes. Can it, can it go beyond one file, like the context of the prompting and the transformation is one file, or can it go like see the whole thing? Right now it's one file, but um, with this whole repository um, feature, I can imagine this transform changing to whole repo, like choose your whole repo and then say transform. For example, let's say you have an old version of Java and you want to transform your whole project to a new version. Um, you want to be able to enable that basically and say transform this repo to Java 20 or something like that. So that's the direction we want to go, but as of today, just 
this is the beginning of what that. So if we be able to do things like finding that code that there is no way to like unreachable code. Okay, I mean in this case, it'll not, I mean transform won't help you with that because transform is about changing the code. But you could probably we could ask. I mean, yeah, I mean I don't think it has it has the, the understanding right now because it has to see the whole repo to see which test is being called from which code. And right now the context is just one file or a couple of files. So again, I think this will be something that will come with the whole that whole repo thing. <laughs> But yeah, these are all good suggestions that I will definitely um, follow up with the team. Yeah. Okay, so let me show you a couple more things and then we can take uh, more questions. Um, so finally, after after all this, you want to probably deploy the code. Um, so again, you can ask Gemini how to do this if you're not familiar. So let's go back to our chat and say, um, how can I deploy up? dot pi to cloud run with G cloud source space deploy without the image plug. Again, I'm giving detailed instructions um, because I know that in cloud run, you can deploy the container using Docker file or you can deploy from the source code. So I'm making sure that Gemini is going to give me the right answer. So I'm asking that. And then it's for some reason in the last few days, it's, it's giving me more information, but basically it's this command, right? So, so G cloud run deploy my app dash dash source. So it's giving more information than I need, but it's also giving me the command to run it. So let's see if this works. So if I do that, um, then it's asking me where do you want to deploy? Um, so Europe West, allow an authenticated yes. And now this will go and deploy my application, okay? So it's not a perfect answer. It's giving me a lot of stuff, but at least it gave me the command to use and then I can deploy it. And then actually I already deployed this. So let me show you this um, in Google Cloud. So let's go to Cloud Run. Let's close this. And uh, yeah, I have this running here. And if I look at the logs, can see uh, I have a bunch of logs and I see there's something wrong here. There's a warning, right? So what, so Gemini is here too. So here, like I'm looking at logs and then there's some warning. I'm like, okay, can you explain this log? And I click and this opens Gemini on the side. And now the, there's this Reddit prompt. The, the prompt is kind of funny. It says you are a Google Cloud site reliability engineer <laughs> with in-depth understanding of troubleshooting problems. So what does this mean, you know? And then it, it, it gives you an explanation basically because it's 404 um, it can be because of this and then you can keep iterating basically on, on, on this information so and the idea here is basically give you information on operating the application and also suggest things to fix it if there's something wrong it will suggest things uh, on fixing it it doesn't fix it automatically yet <laughs> it's not there yet but at least it will tell you uh, some it will give you some ideas on how to fix it all right I think that's all I have. Let's double check. Yeah. Yeah, so it's been 50 minutes, so thanks for putting up with me <laughs> for all this time. But as I said, um, if you want the slides, this is the speaker deck. And if you want to try this thing yourself, this is the repo. And I'm gonna keep adding more to this repo as more things come up with, with Gemini. So you'll you'll see that this repo will expand. And if you have ideas on what to what else to show please let me know in the repo of his issues and I'll, I'll always appreciate ideas on that. And yeah, thanks very much uh, for listening. Questions? Yeah, sure. Yeah, I have a couple of questions related to the concept of uh, keeping context and everything. So uh, I'm assuming that the history of the chart works by like project when you you can close everything and once you open again, it keeps track of what you said before, right? Well, so if if you remember, like here for example, so right now I didn't delete anything, so it will remember the whole chat. But if I go here and then reset chat, then th this will clear the context. Okay, and is there a way, or have you thought about a way of sharing the context? 
like uh, for example, if I want to work on another computer or something, is there a way I can pass this chart history to this other computer? Uh, no, not right now. Okay. I don't think so. I, I don't. I don't think it's something. What What's the use case you're thinking? Uh, changing to another computer. Okay. So you and then I want to, and you want to move to like say cloud shell and then have the same. Yeah. Uh, no, no, we don't have that. Okay. And um, my other question is more about the context of uh, using like other files to define like the answer. Yeah. And and it's about uh, I, I don't know if you've uh, talked about this. Maybe you have already said it. But does it have access to all the files or just the ones that we have open? So right now, if you look at the context, it's always one file. So it, you, it now it just looks at the file that's open. Uh, but we announced that one feature where it will look at basically your whole project, your whole, your whole local project, and it will find the relevant file basically for what you're asking. And then there's going to be another feature where, where it will be able to look at the whole repository that you have, and not just the project, but also everything else in the repository. So the whole source tree with the folders and everything. Yeah, exactly. Right. So that will be the the ultimate, like basically you, you will have access to everything if you want to give it access, because sometimes you, maybe you don't want mm -hmm. access. You don't want to give access. But yeah, I mean, as of today, it's just one file, but we are expanding that basically. And, and is there a way like, uh, for example, in compiler, do you have a way to like uh, force the reference of the file? Uh, like if you have an, an open file, can you force the, that it takes the context of that file? Well, to, or it to, always does? Well, to force it, you open the file and close other ones. Okay. That's one way. Another way is you can basically explicitly say here. Instead of the open file, you can say, ex for example, let, let's try this. Like, now, this, app, this is open, right? So now if I say explain app.py, for example, app.py, and let's close this as well. So it's not open, right? So now I'm kind of forcing it. So I would guess that it will basically, yeah. So now if you look at the context, Ah, so the context is still product, so, so we can enforce it basically. Um, yeah, I don't know why I should, should have. So that's why we have this new local context feature mm -hmm. so that it will be able to see beyond what's open. Okay. So pretty soon, basically, when you say explain app the file, <coughs> even though it's not open, it will look at it. But as of today, it looks like it's just the open file that you have. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Good questions. Thank you. Yes. Uh, I guess when you were generating the code, you mentioned another file, no? From from up dot. Uh, I think that you mentioned okay. I want a service for product dot file or something like that, no? Like this. Yeah, I, I was I created a new new file, and then here I was just adding comments, and it was generating in this file. So it, so it, it was basically the open file where I was generating the code. Yes. Yeah. I thought that we, in some moment. From one file, we reference another in the unit from app.py. Yeah, from yeah, I, yeah, we actually did that as well. Yeah, that's true. Like in app.py, um, yeah, we basically said, <laughs> yeah, we refer to this file. So yeah, in some cases, it actually sees that there's another file and it actually takes that into account. And in other cases, it doesn't. But um, it's one of those things where the LLM is like you never know exactly what it knows and what how it's going to respond. But it's getting better. Like initially, it was just the file, now it knows some, some files, pretty soon it's gonna know the whole project, and pretty soon it's gonna know the whole repo, basically. So I think all these questions will probably go away at some point where it will just know everything. <laughs> I don't know if it's good or bad, but yeah. <laughs> yes? Is Google planning to train Gemini on Grok's LPUs in the future? On what, sorry? Grok's LPUs. It's a processing chip that's different from NVIDIA's. It's yeah. way faster. Okay, um, I don't know. Yeah, I can ask. <laughs> yeah. That's the AI to take over. <laughs> Isn't that a million dollar question? <laughs> um, I don't, I mean, it's hard to tell. I don't think, from what I've seen so far, it's making my job easier, right? In a slightly frustrating kind of way, because I still get frustrated with a little bit when it doesn't do the right thing. But overall, it's kind of, making me not worry so much about the low level details and just tell it, generate the test and it finds the, the, the right um, libraries and it gives it the, the right base test cases, but it, it will never get, at least it doesn't get everything correct. So at that point I come in and then I try to fix it and make it do what I want, right? So I think that part is not gonna go away. But we somewhat, we still need to direct the AI. But if, if, if our role is just coding, I think that part is going to be probably slight, 
slightly going to go, go away. Like we, we are not going to code every single detail, but someone has to be in charge still to kind of direct the AI to do the right thing. So in that sense, I don't feel threatened yet, <laughs> yeah. but we'll see. <laughs> yes. Uh, so thank you for the lecture. Uh, but I have already used GitHub Pilot, uh, which is like, it has like pieces the same features. Yeah. Uh, so what's the main differences between this, uh, like Jenny Quarter system and GitHub Pilot? And the uh, second question would be, uh, maybe I have skipped, but uh, GitHub Pilot uh, like was learned uh, on the code base of uh, public repositories in GitHub. And uh, as far as I understood, uh, Jenny Quarter system like was has been learning on the uh, projects of on Google Cloud, yeah? Yeah, so what's the difference between Gemini, Code Assistant, and Copilot? I mean, at the end of the day, they're similar tools. Um, but I think Gemini Code Assist is more trained on Google Cloud. So if you're working on Google, Google Cloud, it has more understanding of Google Cloud services, um, how to deploy Cloud Run, stuff like that. It will know more about Google Cloud. So if you're working in Google Cloud, it will be better to use Gemini. But if you're talking about just general code generation, like Python or Java, not tied to AWS or Google Cloud, then they will probably do similar things. So I, I didn't do like side by side comparison to see who does what in what way. But at the end of the day, they're similar tools. Like it's like a, having Chrome, Chrome browser versus uh, Firefox, right? What's the difference? Like depends on your preference, I guess, right? And in terms of, um, well, I mean, Gemini Code is, Gemini is also trained on all the public stuff. Um, but the this one is, Customize for Google Cloud, so that's the that's the difference. That's the key. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Uh, my question is regarding um, actually related with uh, BigQuery. BigQuery, okay. So, as you know, in a in a big enterprise uh, data mesh where we have a lot of events, sometimes it's difficult to know your query, uh, which domain even do you need exactly? Is uh, Gemini able to understand? uh the different data sources that we have in BigQuery to provide you a query based on this or not yet um it it does have the i haven't tried it too much but it does have the basic integration with BigQuery, so you can ask like so it knows what data sources you have and then you can ask like can you give me this data from this table and in the natural language and it will actually give you the sql for that okay so it has the, the context so it has the context of yeah the yeah but how complicated does it get and how well it does? I don't know. Like, I mean, you have to try it out and see. To see. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah. So, uh, this is using Gemini uh, to uh, create a new code and change the things. Are you planning on using Gemma for the same or releasing a Gemma mm -hmm. version? Um, I don't think so because, I mean, Gemini is better than Gemma, right? It's bigger and it's going to get bigger. Um, whereas Gemma is open source, uh, I mean, it's still good, but I don't think it will be as good as the Gemini version. So because of that, I don't see, I don't see us replacing um, Gemma here, but will someone do it? Maybe, <laughs> no one, I mean, it's uh, out there, it's open source, so someone can come in and basically implement that if they want. So I don't know, maybe it will be there, but not from Google, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. Would also be accessible through Google Colab? That's a good question. And no, the answer is no, but I, a few people ask that. So I'm going to bring that to the team just to make them aware that people ask for that. I have a, a last question uh, regarding the, the price in the license, etc. Uh, you said that it's a different product. So if we have a corporate uh, Google Cloud uh, license is already in included, or we need to to add on top of this this product the Gemini. I mean, it really depends on the, the type of license you have. So maybe you, if your company has like you can need all kind of license, so maybe it will be already there. Uh, but I think usually it's it's basically a, a, a additional license on depending on the number of developers that your company has. But you you really need to talk to the sales people about that. I don't I don't pay attention to sales. That. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. So if Gemini is able to understand the whole context of 
like different files for specific applications. For example, is it also able to, based on that, provide like uh, for Google Cloud, uh, what uh, commands to run to deploy, for example, instances or some database or GPU clusters? Yeah, I mean, so I tried to show it at the end of the presentation how to get the command to deploy to Cloud Run. So I asked that in the chat, and then it gave me a command that worked. So yeah, it, it can give you commands to run to deploy different applications to different places like Compute Engine, Kubernetes, Cloud Run, Cloud Functions. But you need to ask it, like in the chat. But you need to basically ask the right questions with the right context. So my question would be if some beginner user for the whole uh, cloud environment is not really aware of what's going on, they just put a, uh, a command that's going to be a huge feeling command. Like, is there a filter for that? Or, or a filter for what? Like, for example, some command that in the end is going to, like, not even, not really um, satisfying the needs of the app that's going beyond for the user. So you spin up like, I don't know. Oh, okay. So you're asking basically. Uh, okay. So you're asking, what if Gemini tells me to deploy a thousand machines? Like, what is the safeguard for that? Um, hopefully, it won't do that. <laughs> I mean, that's why you, you need to like pay attention to what you're getting, and and don't you can't just blindly copy and paste and and expect that it's gonna work. It's not gonna work. So yeah, I mean, there's I don't know like if there's special safeguards for. Doing something not stupid, basically, that's what you're asking. Um, what I would suggest is that like ask Gemini and take that, but also think about what you're running. Like, don't just blindly copy and paste and expect that it's going to be perfect. You know, I mean, it, it is trained on best practices on Google Cloud, so hopefully, it won't tell you deploy this where you have a public service where anyone can access to the service. You know, it won't do that. I don't think. But you should still think about it. And that's why I feel like our jobs are still secure because we still need to make these decisions in the end. Maybe as a follow up, sorry, but um, is it able to like provide a, a cost estimate of what's going to cost, like for example, to uh, I don't think so, but that's a good idea actually. Like just to give an estimate, like how much does it take to call? Does it? Let's see. Like I don't know. Does it even answer that question? How does it cost? How, uh, how much does it cost to run a cloud run service, for example? Let's see if it even answers that question. Because sometimes it doesn't even answer a question. But this will probably give us a cost like table or something like that. Yeah. It says it's based on per second billing model, which is true. You are only charged for the time that your service is running, and if you deploy it in US Central with 5, 12 megabyte of memory, what one CPU will take cost this much? Okay, so it does answer that. So potentially it could answer the question, but we, I don't know. <laughs> yes? Yeah, it's cool. I couldn't find anything but it, about if Google is searching to build smaller LLMs, because I think Microsoft just today announced their small LLMs are outperforming some of the bigger ones that are already open source. Yeah. So I just want to see if Google is also taking that, looking at that other area of business as well. Yeah, so Gemini has three sizes, Nano, Putra, and something else. Like, I always confuse these names, but there's a smaller version already. Now, will there be a smaller, maybe? Uh, will there be versions for devices, like for phones? Probably. Yeah, so there will be a bunch of different models with a bunch of different sizes. I think the challenge will be like trying to figure out like what I need to use, what's enough for my use case, stuff like that. So yeah, the answer is yes, but yeah. Okay. Any yeah? This is a opinion a question, I guess. Do you think that code quality will change due to <laughs> this help we are getting? Will it be lower, higher? Uh, <laughs> We'll see. I don't know. I don't, I don't know, to be honest. I mean, it depends how, if we, if we give up on coding and we just rely on LLM, then lower. <laughs> maybe it's going to be lower because if nobody puts code 
publicly anymore, and then the LLMs are not trained anymore, then maybe we'll just use the same kind of code and, and things won't get better. But maybe LLMs will actually find better ways of coding and then then it will get better. I don't know. Like, I mean, it's a really open question. We will rely on QA. <laughs> yeah. Or maybe coding will be so low level that we won't have to worry about it and we'll, have, we'll just basically just write comments. Yeah. And under, under the line, there will be some code, but who cares what that code is, right? If you can just describe what you want. Yes. Uh, can you port this uh, assistant for uh, Google Colab? No. Google Colab, yeah. That, we don't have it yet, but it's a common question. So I will make sure we, I say that to the team. Uh, we, we have the video, right? Yeah. So I will capture all these questions and then send it to the team. Yeah. <laughs> okay, any more questions? All right, and then... Um... We have some networking prepared by the guys from Thelonis, and there's a kitchen right here to the next with an area for networking, and bathrooms are here. And if you want to leave, uh, you have to tell either uh, Javier or uh, my colleague Anna that it will be there because we need to to exit for another floor, okay? Because the main floor now is is closed, okay? All right. So thank you very much, guys, for uh, attending, and thank you for.